One late night, three witches guarded a pregnant woman, using magic to protect the cottage in the woods, to prevent the newborn from being taken by its vampire father. After the pregnant woman gave birth to a baby boy, she died from blood loss. At that moment, the vampire was approaching the cottage, bringing immense power. Only by combining their powers did the three witches manage to stop him. Their aged faces regained their youthfulness. This child would be the chosen one of the future. The witches would raise him until he could make his own choices. It was during the Balkan Wars. The baby from years ago had grown into an adult. His name was Harlan. To this day, he is still haunted by the nightmares of his birth. However, he doesn't remember anything from the past. Whether it's the witches or his lineage, everything has vanished from Harlan's memory. Nowadays, he and his friend Yuri wander in the countryside, pretending to be dampers, pretending to help villagers drive away vampires and earn money. In a nearby town, there is indeed a group of vampires causing harm. Corpses are scattered all over the streets. Each one has been drained of blood. Commander Yale leads his soldiers to this location, thinking that these bodies were killed by wolves. They lost contact with the main force, so they can only wait in the town. That night, two soldiers were chatting while on guard duty. Unexpectedly, they encountered a short-haired woman, Frida, seeking help. They immediately approached her. But the next moment, the woman's face twisted into a sinister smile. As she extended her long nails, Yale and the others rushed out upon hearing screams, getting close to the source of the sound, only to be tackled and devoured by the vampires. Yale commanded everyone to fire at the shadows, but Frida had already flown to the rooftop, taking advantage of the darkness and disappearing. The wounded soldier said he had shot the creature, but the bullets were useless against them. Yale realized the enemy in this town was not as simple as a wolf pack. Yale's subordinate, Eric had heard rumors about vampires. He knew there was a damper nearby, who claimed to be able to dispel vampires. The next day, soldiers stormed into the village, capturing Harlan and Yuri, who were deceiving people. Harlan was brought before Yale by the soldiers. The other party wanted him to hunt down the vampires in the town. But Harlan was just a scammer. He didn't believe vampires existed, let alone capture them. Yale knocked down Harlan, taking him to a pile of corpses. Yale made him understand that he wasn't joking with him. If vampires attacked the town again, both of them would die. The reason Yale concluded that Harlan wasn't just a scammer was because his subordinate Eric had mentioned about this person who had aged in decades and the villagers called him the devil's son. Whether he was the devil's son would be known if they tried. Eric threw a gun to Harlan, dropping the other party in the courtyard. If he could survive tonight unharmed, it would prove that Eric wasn't lying. Late at night, Harlan patrolled around with a gun. He encountered Frida in an abandoned building. Frida disguised herself as an ordinary woman, rushing into Harlan's arms seeking help. Frida prepared to feed on blood, but she was startled by the scent coming from him. Harlan hastily fled, but he was knocked down by the vampire behind the door. He immediately pulled out his gun and fired, but the vampire was unaffected by regular bullets. Eric scratched Harlan's chest, and Harlan's blood burned his hand, causing smoke to rise. The flesh on Eric's palm corroded and fell off. The vampire beside them, upon seeing his companion injured, it even came forward to meet its demise. Harlan grabbed it with his blood-stained hand, directly scalded the vampire until it dissipates. Eric was so frightened that he couldn't close his mouth. Freya realized this person might be the lost offspring of the leader, a natural vampire hunter called Dampir. The leader sensed Harlan's bloodline and ordered the vampires to retreat, but he instructed Frida to stay and monitor Harlan. The next day, sunlight illuminated the earth. The vampire corpses turned to charred remains in the sunlight. Harlan, however, stood in the courtyard. He led Yale and the others to meet Freya. Most soldiers were afraid of vampires. They didn't want to stay in the town and wait for death, so they disregarded Yale's command and left on their own. Although Eric didn't want to leave, Yale ordered him to retreat with Yuri and the others. Only three people remained in the abandoned building. Harlan pressed Frida, asking why she didn't escape. She said she didn't want to be controlled by Master of the Night anymore. He was the leader of all vampires. His power was so immense that he could face the sun. Frida told Harlan, Master of the Night is your father. When he mates with a human woman, it gives birth to a dampier. Now, Master of the Night knows about Harlan's existence. He will definitely try to eliminate him. As Frida finished speaking, Master of the Night intercepted the fleeing soldiers. With a wave of his hand, several soldiers exploded and died. The rest immediately turned and ran away. As Master of the Night approached, Harlan felt a splitting headache. Images of the forest appeared in his mind. Harlan saw 
Master of the Night had captured Yuri, Kip pleaded with Frida to take him to the enemy slayer. Although Yale didn't trust vampires, she was the only one who knew the whereabouts of Master of the Night. The two of them followed Frida's lead. They drove away from the town, finding a place to rest for the night. Harlan dreamt about many childhood memories. Master of the Night, the witch, the children who bullied him. These images flashed by, waking Harlan up from his dream. He walked to the lake to take a cold bath. He noticed the scratches on his chest had almost disappeared, most likely due to his vampire bloodline. The three of them were getting closer to Master of the Night, which meant there would be more and more vampires. Yale's gun would become ineffective. Nevertheless, Harlan had a solution. He cut his palm, soaking the bullets in his blood. Perhaps blood-soaked bullets could harm vampires. Now Yale had a self-defense weapon. Frida couldn't go into the thief's den empty-handed. Harlan handed her the blood-stained razor. It could save her life in a critical moment. The three of them hurried on their way as dawn approached. Frida took the lead, guiding them. Master of the Night Slayer was beneath the library. To enter, they had to find a secret passage. On the other side, the deserter leader captured by Master of the Night. Finally we gained consciousness. This person was vile, despicable, and hated to ill. He is most suitable as a killing tool. So Master of the Night transformed him with blood, making the deserter join the vampire army. Meanwhile, it was already dark. Yale followed Frida. They had been walking for a few hours. He had completely lost patience. He suspected Frida was intentionally delaying. The next moment, several vampires descended from the sky. They were all converted deserters. Frida quickly hid after completing her mission. Yale took cover with Harlan behind a barrier. He shot a bullet with his heart pounding. Fortunately, Harlan's blood-soaked bullet worked. The vampire hit by the bullet instantly turned to ashes. Both sides immediately engaged in a duel. The converted soldiers had significantly enhanced combat abilities. Yell and the others exerted great effort to eliminate the vampire army. At this moment, Frida appeared with a gun in her hand. After spending these days together, Harlan knew she wasn't inherently evil, so he didn't let Yell shoot. He walked up to Frida's gunpoint. He wanted to persuade her to resist Master of the Night. Harlan's honesty moved Frida, but she had already been completely controlled by Master of the Night and had to pull the trigger. Yell immediately helped the injured Harlan up and quickly tended to his wounds. Meanwhile, Frida was completely enraged. She didn't want to continue being a slave to Master of the Night, so she walked up to one of the hunted vampires and ended his life with a razor. This action drew the attention of Master of the Night. He wouldn't allow any of his subjects to betray him. But Frida had already made up her mind to die. She revealed her vampire form, gripping the razor Harlan had given her tightly. Frida took a swift step forward, but Master of the Night was like a phantom. Her blade couldn't touch him at all. Master of the Night struck Frida with a single blow, sending her flying, mocking her for her audacity. He grabbed Frida's neck and let out a sinister laugh. On the other side, Harlan's gunshot wound had already healed. Yale collected the blood he had shed last night and stored it in a glass jar. The two of them entered the empty library. The room was bathed in blood red light, creating an indescribable sense of eeriness. They split up to search for Master of the Night's location, but Yale quickly fell under an illusion, seeing his own young child dead in the war. He immediately fainted. When Yale regained consciousness, he found himself bound in a secret room by Master of the Night, with Frida, who was severely injured, bound across from him. Then, the deserter leader stepped forward. He used a flamethrower to burn Frida's abdomen, filling the air with a smell of burning flesh. Yell spat at the deserter, luring him towards him. The deserter already had to stain for this commander. He stabbed his nails into Yell's side, enjoyed the pain of the other person to the fullest. Meanwhile, Frida seized the opportunity. She swiftly hoisted the iron chain as the deserter swung his claws, and the claws severed the chain, granting them freedom once again. Frida wrapped her arms around the deserter's neck, lifting him off the ground. Yale opened the flamethrower and burned him to death, noticing Frida's severe injuries. He willingly offered her some of his blood to drink. At this moment, Harlan ventured deeper into the library and approached Master of the Night, realizing that he wasn't an ordinary vampire. Master of the Night was faster than a bullet. Harlan was no match for him. He was completely defenseless against Master of the Night's blows. Master of the Night lifted Harlan into the air without touching him, but instead of immediately killing Harlan, he released Harlan's friend, Yuri, as he intended for them to fight each other. Yet Harlan would never harm his friend, allowing Yuri to stab his hand into his own body. Harlan's blood was poisonous to vampires, causing Yuri to turn into a lifeless corpse. 
Harlan charged and master of the night, but in the next moment, he was knocked down to the ground. In a critical moment, Frida and Yell appeared, but they were quickly trapped by master of the night. In a state of unconsciousness, Harlan saw three witches and a man standing in front of them. It turned out, master of the night was not Harlan's father. His bloodline comes from another extraordinary vampire named Draka, who is the true lord of the night. His father awakened Harlan's dormant bloodline, a surge of power coursing through his heart. Harlan stood up once again, master of the night immediately revealed his true form. They engaged in a fierce battle, both of them soared into the air simultaneously. Harlan smashed master of the night towards the ground from midair. He gripped master of the night's neck, until the monster finally lost its vitality disintegrating into ashes between his fingers. At this moment, the secret door of the library opened. The three of them walked into the hall together. A book left behind by Draco lay on the table. It contained the records of everything about vampires. Master of the Night was not the only enemy. Harlan had to deal with other creatures. In order to protect peace and the human world, his mission was not yet over. But the movie ends here. The identity and story of Draco will be revealed in the subsequent stories. If you enjoyed my channel, please consider subscribing.